or to the cloud. And so let me begin my presentation. Admit. First off, let me stop to make sure that everyone can view the presentation. It's recruitment and retention. Yes. Okay, fabulous. So my topic is recruitment and retention within the JAG program. It's today, obviously, June 21, 2022, the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock window. Uh, with that window being stated, I wanted to point out, uh, this is also something that I'm presenting at the national conference. And so this one's a little bit, uh, we had to condense it a little bit. There's some video and media applications that I have in a longer presentation that I'd love to share. So I extend the opportunity for you to come and check it out at the National Convention. That being said, good morning. I'm Carl Turk, Specialist, Cloverdale JAG, Region 7. And Cloverdale is the home of the Clovers. So my first slide is just a general about us. And this picture was taken maybe about a month ago, the cohort we went to visit IUPUI in Indianapolis. And so this is my cohort, the 21, 22 students. And about us. Well, first off, we're a small school. We're in Region 7, which is considered West Central Indiana, uh, located on Interstate 70, exit 41. So we are literally, and I do mean literally, between Indianapolis and Terre Haute on the highway. We were established in the 16-17 school year. I've been the only specialist, so it's been a joy and a pleasure to see our growth. Cloverdale High School itself is considered, I think most would agree, a small school. The population is 330, and unfortunately it's declining as it is, it seems to be in a bunch of different places. Just for a viewpoint, in 2019, we had 360 students. And for those that kind of look at the IHSAA numbers, that would put us within uh, the 2A classification. There's 1,500 in the entire corporation. 2% of the corporation is considered minority. 12% of the families within the corporation are at or below the poverty line. We have an extremely highly transient population. More on that later, but in short, what we found is a lot of our students have a familial situation that either is in Indianapolis or Terre Haute. And oftentimes the best resolution for the student is to attend school in Cloverdale whether that's paternal custody, being with grandparents, or any other idea. And then finally, just an enrollment range for our cohort. Uh, our smallest number of participants was 33 in the year 2017. Uh, the greatest number we have is 55. That was in year 2019, right before all the different COVID situations. And in this past year, we were at a peak of 36. We did lose a couple people to end the year at 33. A little bit about us or about me. Hey, my position in the Jack family, I'm a specialist at Cloverdale High School. Uh, just for interest, my education, bachelor's in Spanish, master's in secondary ed, working on PhD and ed leadership at Indiana State University. Recent awards, 2021 Putnam County Citizen of the Year, 2021, 22, IBCA Transformational Coach of the Year, also coach basketball. And then where I feel like the presentation really, really begins is now, I put the word also. And if you look to the bottom and the right, there's a photo. It's me receiving the uh, Citizen of the Year. The lady to, the, to my left, the picture right, is my mother. But over my right shoulder, there's a younger lady to the picture left and my shoulder's right. Along with all the other things that I mentioned, this is the first time I've publicly talked about this. I'm a JAG dad. And what I mean by JAG dad is, <clears throat> if you can see my cursor, there's a student right here dressed in white with black pants. Her name is Chelsea, and she's a member of our 2018 and 2019 cohorts. Uh, well, upon graduation, uh, well, let me back up a step. She definitely experienced what we like to label as barriers, but just different circumstances in life. But she's a member of our 19 cohort and upon graduation, we have this follow-up idea in JAG and that's exactly what I did. 
but through follow up and through 2020 and different other circumstances, uh, I became more than just her specialist. I helped her get through college or get into college. Uh, she's running collegiately. She's enlisted in the Air Force. And then this past fall, I became literally a JAG dad. To my right, or your right, the picture left, yesterday represented our first Father's Day. And this is the card she wrote me, not to definitely share all of our personal business like that, but this past Father's Day a couple of days ago, I matriculated from just being her specialist and to being her dad. And occasionally I'm looking away, you guys, there's people being admitted, I've got backgrounds that's fallen, so I've got a million different things going on, but I don't take lightly this presentation or the work that we do in that for many of our students, we've become more than just a teacher. We're already a JAG specialist, which is more than just a teacher. And then many times that specialist leads you down roles and other paths in life. So I have become a JAG dad. If the slide will change, maybe I'm supposed to just leave that one up. <laughs> All right, give me a second. I've done some sort of command that won't let the slides show go through when I admitted somebody. Let's see if I can get that to resolve itself. Okay, I don't know what it's doing, but that can be my next slide. So the first strategy that I want us to think about is a strategy of simply looking in the mirror. Uh, too often, I do believe that as a teacher, we wanna remain humble and not draw attention to ourselves. And I certainly respect that perspective, but what I have found in my experience reflecting upon my own program, and by the way, I think this is more of a conversation and a best practices within our program conversation. Nowhere do I proclaim to be the expert on how to recruit and retain in your program, but I definitely do wanna share some strategies that'll work for us. And the first one has just been for me to look in the mirror. And what I mean by that is, there we go. <clears throat> I've noticed some of the attributes that comprise who I am. And I've also seen that reflected in our cohorts numbers. On the screen it reads that our cohort has had a significant number of minorities, while I certainly would classify most viewpoints as a minority. We've had a higher than average number of athletes. I coach basketball, I announce for the volleyball team, the basketball team, so on and so forth. We've had people with disabilities. I uh, walk with the cane, with that previous picture. You can see me with my cane, coaching basketball and things of that nature. But not only should we look in the mirror, take a moment to look beyond that mirror. In our cohort, we've had a significant number of valedictorians. Uh, I tend to push education a bunch. I'm working on my PhD. I'm always talking about my master's and different other things. We've had a significant number of college bound students. You know, I lead with how I used to coach college basketball and just different university things. I sponsor university field trips for the whole school. And then we've had a significant number of military members. I didn't get a chance to serve, but many members of my family have served. For those that can't see me, I'm wearing a dog tag that is from my grandfather who served in Vietnam and served in Korea. And so we've always had a precipitous number of military speakers and I definitely have promoted the different branches of the service. So strategy number one, simply just take a look in the mirror and look beyond the mirror, because as the quote said, like a moth to a flame, you're gonna attract students. Here's some of the images just over the years. And yes, I use my dad privileges. I threw Chelsea in the bottom left-hand corner, but we've got our military members, the bottom right picture, and if screen sharing is working, you can see my cursor. This is a member of the volleyball team. This is the volleyball team in 2019. We had all but two members and they were just underclassmen, not ju uh, juniors or seniors, so we couldn't attract them. Uh, these are the cheerleaders. Uh, this picture, I, I debated on the insertion of this picture, but let me tell you the story behind it. Uh, this is my cohort. I believe that's 2019, 20 school year. And uh, I didn't know what the children had done when we take this picture. And I, Hope you guys can humor me and appreciate the message I'm trying to push forward. I'm sitting right here in the picture and I didn't realize around me the different minority children in the cohort decided to, and you can follow the cursor, they decided to sit around me in the picture. I had no clue. I'm just sitting there posing for the picture one, two, three and taking it. And then afterwards, the whole cohort, and I do mean the whole cohort, regardless of ethnic affiliation, 
took a lot of pride in telling me about what they had done in that picture. So again, I know it isn't possibly one of the things that we like to draw attention to ourselves or examine ourselves or even put ourselves forward, but I do think it's an effective strategy to consider yourself and the attributes that comprise you, whether you can see them readily in the mirror or do you have to look beyond the mirror? Because oftentimes I've found that those are really strong recruitment points and retention points in your cohort. Another strategy I'd like to talk about is just getting out of the janitor's closet. Backing up a slide, one of the pictures is bigger than the other. Um, makes me a little emotional to talk about it, but I'd love to share. This is private first class deceased, Matthew Roker. He was a member of our 2019 cohort and since graduation has passed on. The slide that you see now is a bench that our JAG cohort had constructed that sits literally in the entryway to the school. Within that frame, you see like a sign, I guess this is the best word to put it, where it reads, the students of the 21 and 22 JAG classes work to dedicate this bench, and we give credit to who constructed it, and loving member of, yes, our Matthew Roker, but also two other students that had passed on in that time period in our school. I offer that to lead you this way. Let's work to get our JAG classes out of that back room in the corner broom closet thing that I, unfortunately I have learned that a lot of times that's where we tend to fit in our school buildings. So what I did is I populated two slides with questions or maybe ideas you could think about. And one is just where is that class located? Uh, we had to move our class. Quite frankly, it was tucked in the most western corner of the school in a computer lab no one ever visited. And so we've moved that room. We've totally moved that room, that sign right there, enter here for the JAG class, so on and so forth. But I'd offer for consideration, where's your class located? How much traffic can you get just by moving your location so people can understand the awesomeness emanating from your room? Another strategy that really worked that fits inside of this grouping is in which department is JAG a part of academically or is it even? I've learned from most teachers it's not. We have made a point to integrate our department as part of the big business faculty at our school. Well, we had done that the first two years anyway. We did the, enough talk about resumes and getting a job and keeping a job that the school best felt would be a good part of the business department which I concurred. We've now actually since moved over, honestly, to the social sciences department, which is totally fine. But see if you can invest your or leverage your uh, JAG program into a department. Another question, is your JAG part of the club roster or even on scheduling forms? We found out the first year, which was the, uh, the end of the first year, second year of recruitment, we were not populated on the recruitment forms that students fill out for next year's courses. I don't think it was malicious or anything of that nature, just simply we hadn't been in existence all those years, so someone just overlooked us. But think about those things. Are you part of the club roster? You know, a lot of times for yearbook photos, they have club rosters and at graduation, which you'll see on the next slide, how can you intersperse your JAG program in the graduation? In this first year, we have JAG cords now, just like the NHS gets a cord that's whatever color and the top, how many ever graduates gets a cord that's whatever color. Now the red, white, and blue cord at Coverdale High School represents graduates of Cloverdale JAG. So again, are you even a part of the club roster? You have a career association, work to include yourself. The second slide of just bullet points. This is a big one. What activities can a specialist do to get involved besides JAG? I occupy a unique position. I uh, teach Spanish at Cloverdale High School. I'm also a basketball coach and I fill in in any other ways that time permits. I announce at the games and a bunch of different other things. Point being, the people of Cloverdale never quite saw me as just the JAG teacher. Heck, they don't even understand, honestly, for the most part, a lot of what JAG is in the community. I once had to explain, hey, I'm compensated by a different organization, not even community, Cloverdale Community Schools, but they never saw a difference. And that lack of seeing a difference has been acted on within the students of the building as well, and also within our program. So I, I would advise 
how much can you intersperse yourself into the school curriculum outside of JAG? I think all it's going to do is just build some buy-in from the school community as a whole in promoting your program. The next bullet point, how can we incorporate the school population as a whole? Field trips being a great tool. We do a lot of college visits. Let me check the message. Carl, could you um, admit someone is in the waiting room? Sure. Like great. Thank you. Is it working now? There it goes. I didn't even see the message. Thank you. Not a One more. Perfect. For those that are joining in, my apologies. I didn't see the message of asking to be admitted. I'm Carl Turk, and we're talking about strategies of recruitment and retention within the JAG program. Briefly, I just started with an introduction of our cohort, Cloverdale High School, myself, uh, some of my educational pieces. And I took a great lot of pride in announcing that I'm a JAG dad. One of my former students has been adopted as a daughter. So as I've moved through the presentation, we talked about just looking in the mirror and realizing that you're kind of like a flame that will attract moths and the different attributes that make up or comprise you will attract students. Uh, I'm an athletic coach, I'm a minority, I do have a disability. Our cohorts had a lot of students that have also associated themselves with those traits. And at the moment, we're just talking about moving your classroom kind of out of the periphery of the school and moving it kind of mainstream. And so at this moment, we're talking about maybe some best practices or points that may work. Um, what activities, again, can the specials get involved in? I teach Spanish at the school. I coach basketball, host other things. Heck, I even announce the volleyball and girls basketball games. But where else can this work for you? And I don't offer that as some sort of call to action saying you must fill up your day with a bunch of activities. I do believe in work-life balance. And I will admit that sometimes I took too much on my plate or sometimes it compromised a few of my JAG duties. I know who I am, I'm a single person. I've only recently had a daughter, so I did have some free time. Certainly and for sure, don't get it twisted. I think your JAG specialist job is your biggest priority within the school building, but it is a good strategy to wonder and consider where else can you intersperse yourself in the district? How can you incorporate the school pro uh, population as a whole? Field trips are a great idea. Uh, every college visit, we go and search the periphery. Are there a couple students interested in that school? that want to go for the ride. You know, we work in concert with the counseling department and we have found that to be a super great recruitment tool because through our culture or through the field trip, the students get exposed to our culture and they realize, okay, here's something that's a little bit different. Somebody that's a little bit different that it really is trying to get me from A to B. Now, whereas there's all kinds of room for Pythagorean theorem and A squared, B squared and C squared, that didn't always ring as relevant. But a lot of what we do is relevant. So I think every opportunity we can let the population as a whole see what we're doing, it's a great strategy, which lends into my last point. How does the community know what we are and what we do? The next slide probably leads into that. And if you give me a moment, I'm going to admit somebody. There we go. Mm -mm. Every time I admit, for whatever reason, it locks up my slides. So give me a second. I think I can get it going again. There we go. Uh -oh. Two more and I think we're good. Okay. And so this is just one example of a lot that we've done. We'll share some more later. And again, if you can come visit us in Vegas, we're gonna give a larger presentation about some of these things. But one example of just showing the whole school who we are and what we do which is called the stick up project. And what we did simply is we took a bunch of sticky notes, so pretty inexpensive. And we decided that a goodwill project that we were gonna do within the class, just to promote well-being and camaraderie within the group, we'd share within the whole school. So as a cohort on Monday morning before classes started, we took the time to put a sticky note on every locker of the school, every. So that's kind of opening the door to be a part of the whole school, not just sticking within our group. And the sticky note simply contains some sort of positive message, picture, poem, whatever. That was Monday's work. Tuesday's work, we did it again. And then on Wednesday, our school has a built-in piece of programming called SRT, which I think was a reading program, stop everything and read, and it became a bunch of other things. Well, we took the Wednesday period to talk to the whole school in person in each classroom about what we were doing. 
And then we extended the opportunity to the entire school to replicate the same. We had the sticky notes available at a two or three de uh, designated locations within the school. And the student body did the same. A lot of students just wondered, hey, who's doing these notes? Oh, it's that Cloverdale JAG group and so on and so forth. And even through the Wednesday meeting, we were able to tell our story. For those that are really wanting to incorporate this idea, a couple best practices. One, sticky notes aren't so expensive. So it definitely is a project that doesn't cost you a great deal. Best practice number two, think about what you're going to do with the inevitable, which I hope isn't inevitable, bad message that somebody may put. Now, we definitely know our work. We work within school buildings, and someone may find that to be an opportunity to be funny, creative, or quite frankly, to help themselves through some sort of, I guess, venting strategy. But we do know that a lot of those notes don't have a uh, rightful purpose within the building, or even I would say they go against the school policy. So as a cohort, figure out what you're going to do and who's going to monitor for notes that aren't conducive to the message you're trying to send. What we did literally is we have two JAG periods a day. So first thing in the morning, we check during each JAG period, we check and at the end of the school day, we check. So we figured within those four checkpoints, there wouldn't be a message that would stick up there too long. And then we actually took some of those messages during that designated school period for clubs where we had taken it over for a day. And we even talked about some of those messages and we had a purpose for those. Not to tell you how to go ahead and do the program yourself, possibly even you can expound upon it, do it better than we did. But I do think this is just a simple one that you can add, enact that not very expensive, won't take too much time, maybe one class period, people can get the notes together. And it definitely tells the rest of the school about who you are. Carl, could you let Leslie in? She's in the waiting room. No problem. Thank you. Uh, let's see if it'll let me. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I hope it doesn't lock me up again. Let's try. Okay. Well, at this moment of the presentation, and I'm looking at the time, I'm almost halfway through. Uh, Another good strategy, it's one that I think we've all probably heard enough of, it's the uh, importance of the social. Now, I didn't omit the word media, I want it to be more of an overarching thought, it's the importance of the social. Uh, there's enough research studies out there, I don't think I need to quote enough, but people tend to be social beings. Uh, when we enter a room, we tend to gravitate towards who we may already know or who we feel we share some characteristics with. The importance of the, the social is exponentially greater within the teenage population that we serve. Uh, this is a picture from one of our career association days. Actually, uh, I don't even completely remember the event that they were all doing, but I think I'm gonna use that on our next brochure. The importance of the social, I think, is a super big strategy to consider when recruiting and retaining within your program. On the right hand side of the uh, screen, I've got some bullet point ideas that I'm going to cover in the next couple slides. But the first one, of course, I'll go ahead and say is social media. Uh, I'm going to show you some different social media posts from our cohort, so I won't go to the pages, but Cloverdale Jag is on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, next school year, we're considering joining Twitter. The kids want to do Snapchat and all the other ones, and I'll be candid with you. I don't know enough about them, so we haven't done it yet. But we're definitely on Facebook and we're definitely on Instagram. And at the end, I'm going to actually invite all of you guys to follow us. The uh, social media pages are student run. Now I've got the logins and I'm a friend on my own personal pages. So I see every post and I post as well, but they're student run. We have a team of eight. They work in groups of two and they each have a day of the week. So I would say 80% of the content with on our pages is student produced. And I found out that that tends to recruit and get the message out better than me. You know, I can use all my doctoral words and things of that nature, but if they don't resonate, then they don't convey a message. The students have found really creative ways to post different things and show different things that we'll show you later. But one, don't underestimate as far as recruiting and retention, social media, don't underestimate it. Within that, and it did lock me up, and so I'll get it unlocked and get it going again, but we found that within the importance of the social, probably the most important social unit to most of us and a very integral social, um, there we go, social unit to our program has been the family. Our cohort has had a ton, 
and we do mean a ton of family members, it's almost become a sense of pride where once we get one member of the family, we want to get all the others that follow in succession. Now picture, we've got the Minton sisters who look like twins on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side are the Massey sisters who absolutely are twins, but we definitely want to talk about the social. I, uh, uh-oh, I did it again. We'll try that again. For me, it just helps me out a great deal to uh, put the links on the pages. So I know a lot of people cover the links with pictures and things of that nature. It just helps me a great deal to keep the links there. And so I'm going to take you now to our Facebook page so you can kind of get an idea of who we are and what we do. Uh oh, that post is going to be funny in a second. I'll definitely tell you about that one. It's within the same thing. Come on, work with me. Again, I apologize every time I admit there's some weird situation, but I think we're going to manage it just fine. Bing. Oh, it stopped my share. Okay, there we go. Can someone speak for me? Is it sharing my screen? I'm getting a bunch of different messages. No, it's just a kind of a blue screen right now. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to do what it wants to do again. We're going to go share screen. We're going to try this again. And if it doesn't happen to do this, we'll move on. We'll try one more time. What, what about now? Is it sharing my screen? You should see a Facebook page. Yes. Yep. Yeah, some people not nah, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. So um, <laughs> this, about this time last year, we actually received a uh, family tree award from a uh, Cloverdale Jag, and it just talked about uh, the sibling ties we've had within the program. And I'll just page through real quick, real quick. These are the Harris's, one of 2017, the other just now of 2022. Uh, just some examples, the Brenneman sisters, as I go through, that's Nick Smith, the sister Haley. So I do think there's a lot to be said, our Massey's again, for thinking about recruiting through the family. Certainly get all the siblings and associated relatives, but also expound upon that idea of recruiting within the family to thinking about recruiting the parents or guardians. What I have found that parents and guardians have been super supportive of our efforts and what we teach. They tend to find that our learning is relevant. Like this is the stuff, quotation mark, I hear all the time. These are the things they should have taught in school. Like we are the class that has the curriculum that says, here's how you get a job and how you keep this job and how you parlay that job into the next opportunity. Our curriculum is specifically designed to do it. So while other classes tangentially touch on it, that's what we're there for. More than that, we do pay attention to trauma-informed care. It's embedded within our curriculum. And parents often appreciate that, that, hey, it's hard enough for them to do whatever it is to be a parent. And oftentimes they don't even see them as many hours in the day that we do. So a lot of times I've found that parents have been our biggest promoters. Even some of the financial incentives, uh, each region's different, I do understand. In our region, I'll speak specifically, students have the opportunity to receive an incentive for $200 upon graduation. Uh, this past year, they received or the opportunity to receive $50 as an award payment for demonstrated mastery of the JAG competency. So I don't understand or know all the different, how the different regions work, but I can tell you about mine. So again, that extra financial incentive definitely pushes parents to have kids consider it, shoot, kids consider it. Uh, even in our region, and again, I know each region's different. We have some students that are participating in uh, work experiences through the WIOLA grant. And so what these experiences do is we find a site that hosts their training, but the JAG program through the WIOA grant actually compensates the student. So it seems to be win, win, win across the board. For parents are like, wow, you helped them get a job that pays for the student. They've got their leg within the door for the uh, corporation or entity. They've got assistance that they're not necessarily compensating in the moment. But I found, and I did the numbers last night, 80% of our workplace or our work experience students, they've been offered a position within that entity. Even that happened last week, but I'll give you more on that in a second. Checking to make sure everything's okay. And it did me again. I'm hoping we're back on the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm looking at the people in the chat. So if anybody can just give me a thumbs up. 
I see no, so it's not we're doing back to it. kind of that blue screen. Back to the blue screen. Okay, perfect. I think I know what I need to do then to make that work the rest of the way. Okay, give me a moment. We'll do this. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so the importance of the family, and then what we're going to do actually, I'll show you this one slide, and then I'll jump in Facebook again, and then I'll stay there for a little bit. We talked about the importance of the family, but within the importance of the social, I want to give you a couple of strategies that have been super good for us. We have benefited from doing, I'm just going to name it, nothing patented or anything like that. We've done kind of a follow in. We've kind of done a lead them through, and then we're all doing a follow up. And what I mean by that is just because our population tend to be the juniors and the seniors, and we kind of recruit as sophomores, we've been very, very, very intentional about following students in. It just stands to reason. We follow you up as you, as you graduate. Why not follow students into this program and push them that way? Now, I will admit me teaching beginning level Spanish at the school definitely has helped with the follow in process, but I've seen ways in which specialists can work to just follow their students in and kind of build up the program as we go. One moment, I'm going to admit someone, so we'll see what that does. So hoping that you guys can consider following your students in. And so the best way to portray that, what I did is I kind of just did a case study. Seeing that the slides are going to act kind of weird, I'm going to just follow the case study through Facebook. I think that's just the best way to do this now. So I'm kind of going to abandon my PowerPoint, which is totally fine. And I'm just going to stick on a Facebook page. So give me a moment. I'll just lift this link, go to Facebook, and then I'll stay there. So give me a few moments, copy, bing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is present the case study of our twins, Paige and Claudia. I know the screen sharing appears to be paused. I think I'm gonna be able to get it rectified in just a second and then we should be good to go. Come on. One more time. Screen sharing should now be good again. And then we'll just do the case study and we'll stay there. So Paige and Claudia, first off, are two students that will be seniors next year in my program. Uh, I did have the opportunity to learn of them freshman year, or actually eighth grade year through a, recruit, a recruitment type fair that we did as a school. It wasn't Cloverdale Jag specific, I'll totally admit to that. It was something we just decided to do as a school district where all the district extracurricular groups went over to the junior high. So by all means, again, as I say, you might want to intersperse yourself into the school activities. We as our extracurricular activity took part in that and we got to know the masses. So <laughs> I think I'm totally having a Murphy's Law Day. I'll try the link one more time. If not, I know which pictures it is. Uh, paste. Nope, it isn't working, but I know which pictures it is, so it's fine. And Carl, so you copied, you copied the link wrong. So if you look at the link when you copied and pasted it. I got it wrong. H, yeah, go back and paste it back online or in the gotcha. URL page. I appreciate if you it. Yeah, the when, HTTP, it's at the end instead of the beginning. Yep, I saw it. When you said that, I was like, you know what? I bet you that's exactly what it is. I appreciate <laughs> that. I'm okay. And when I toggle back, it's going to mess us up again. So we will abort that idea. We'll go just to this. So this is our Facebook page. And I'm just going to follow their story through Facebook, which will definitely work to serve both, both purposes. Again, this is student driven. They're posting every day. I've given them the month of June off for the most part, but they'll be back in July. They post daily, but one of the things I want to talk about is the following, and I'm stretching my post just to get to early 2021, and then we'll be good for there. But the two Massey girls, twins, uh, definitely had some situations, and I did notice right away that some of the attributes that comprised me started to resonate with those two girls as their Spanish teacher. They would often talk about, one, lacking a father figure in their life through their own story, two, uh, being part of the 2% minority within our school corporation, it helped them to have a figure of the same ethnic background as a teacher. Quite frankly, they said they never had a male or a black as a teacher. 
So those sort of things just got them interested in me. So when I spoke about the first strategy, looking in the mirror, a lot of times as specialists, we've got to realize kids don't just think they're taking JAG. They kind of feel like they're taking you. A lot of times the homework won't be seen as, oh, I've got to do my JAG homework. They're going to say, oh, I've got to do Mr. Turk's homework. So realize there is a personification that happens within your program. It isn't just your curriculum. It really isn't. Uh, a couple more scrolls and then the page to catch up. But one thing we did is we met with the Masseys as they both were just trying to find their first job. Uh, July 23rd is just the date, so I'm just hoping to get down to that point. But July 23rd of 2021, so about a year ago, I helped them get their first job. They had already known that JAG was the jobs types class. And long before they became JAG students, we helped them find a job at Arby's. And we were thankful that this post even got shared by JAG Indiana. And that's where you saw the uh, double pictures of the twins. So we kind of followed them in, you know, in the post it said, Claudia and Paige Massey sophomores at Cloverdale High School have already committed to join the JAG cohort a whole year later. And they talk about how the JAG teachers help them, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so I really think it's a salient practice to think about following up your students in. Once you get them in, though, you really do need to lead and, I guess, follow through on what the class promises. My introductory speech, my elevator pitch, whatever you want to call it is, we want to be that class to teach you what school's supposed to teach you. And we want to get you from your letter A to your letter B, whatever your A is and whatever your B is, whether that's job, whether that's college, or whether that's just some personal piece that you need. Totally not ignoring our trauma-informed uh, curriculum. And so with the Masseys, they joined us this year. They're actually two of our social media uh, representatives. And so they've been outstanding in the program. But within that follow through and lead through, we've done a good job of telling people, bring a family member or bring a friend. So that is certainly another um, thing that you can think about in your programs is how can you bring a family member or how can you bring a friend? Again, piggybacking on that idea of the social. And so my next post that I want to click just actually it has my Massey's now in the program and they're bringing someone in. So I'll click it. It's kind of a fun thing that they came up with themselves. So we'll just watch it. Uh oh, did it populate? What you're looking at is a, a, a student for next year. Her name is Hunter Gerritsen. She's going to join us. She's a friend of the Masseys, but they did a super cool creative post that I'm not cool enough or creative enough to come up with. And this should be it. It didn't work. Man, this is my day to day, I guess. So what they did is they carried her in the classroom, literally. So it was a post talking about how friends bring friends in the JAG and it had both of the twin sisters carrying Hunter into the class. Give me a moment. It's arguing with me. I prefer not to do that right now. All right. Well, I'll piggyback to that one as well, but I will go directly to this one. I know exactly where to go. And so we talk about the idea of leading through and following through, but also following up. So what about the masses? And another different thing that we can do to recruit and retain within our programs is consider the summer. For most everyone, summer is school out. And for JAG teachers, we would like to think of it as the same way. But a place where we can totally gain ground and do a great thing for our program is being very persistent and intentional during the summer. Continue to follow through and follow up with your students, not just the graduates, but the juniors that are gonna become seniors and the sophomores that are going to become juniors. So last week, and we didn't post this because it's from a nursing home here in our community. The nursing home is called Summerfield Health. Oh, they changed it to their background. I didn't even know they did that. And so the same Massey, Claudia, is part of the uh, work experience program. And this is her right there. Well, she's doing a work experience this summer at this nursing home. And it's something that I check in on her once every 10 days or so just to see how she's doing. She's doing great. But the piece where her teacher is still seeing her in the summer has resonated with her. And I've kind of talked to the people I've seen within the last couple of weeks. That's what makes us different in our work. Not only we're we just following up with them after graduation, which is outstanding enough, be intentional about following our students in. 
and following them through at the same time. But the overarching thought within that is just simply the idea of the importance of the social. Think about the social for students, whether it's bring a friend, think about it, whether it's this is a member of this club, and definitely think about it within the family structure. We have done, I'd say most of our, our number one recruitment strategy has simply been just getting all the different family members. So think about the importance of the social. The last strategy I want to leave you with, and I'm disappointed here. Let's see if I can do this, see if this works. I think I got it. I'm going to switch over to our Instagram page. And again, the students totally run all that. I think the video is there, so that'll be kind of fun to look at. Because I told the girls I was going to show it, so I want to stick to it. I think we got it. Okay. Uh, one of the things that they did, nope, got it wrong. This is Hunter. Again, here's another example why I'm sticking on it then. This is a sophomore. Uh oh, there we go. This is a sophomore whenever it decides to switch to the next post. Her name's Haley Calkins, and she's joining us next year. You can read it. Uh, we took a quote from the song Cheerleader. I didn't know that song, but the kids did. So we found a cheerleader for 22 and 23. Meet Haley, who will be joining us next year. She currently plays softball and cheers for CHS and will be getting work fresh ready in our class. Go Haley, go. It's always good. Certainly tag Jag Indiana, tag the student, tag the parents. But again, creating that social works really good for recruitment. So that's just another one that we're following in. She'll be with us next year. They've got some pictures of her doing kind of things that she likes to do and enjoy. Cook. Give me a scroll. Oh, they're going to be mad at me that I didn't show that video. So, oh, well. Let me look one more time. If I don't see it, we'll just go on about it. There it is. I did find it. Okay. The girls are going to be so happy because they thought this was the most creative thing in the world. That's just them carrying Hunter in the class. I think it's going to recycle and play itself again. So again, we follow the two girls in. They're in good and thriving, and now they're finding a friend to bring into our class for next year. So this is actually, I got it wrong. This is Hunter's post bringing her in. And here's Hunter, class of 2023. She's the sister of the past, Jack member Holly. So you start to see some of these recurring themes that I think really do proved to be effective. And also, I think it's fun that the kids can put the spin on the social media a little bit better than I can. Uh, 15 minutes left in the presentation. Let me just go to one last strategy. So I'll unearth the PowerPoint one more time. I hope that doesn't uh, destroy what we've got going. I think it did, but oh well, I'll just talk. Uh, lastly, think about your curriculum. Something weird is going on. We'll just leave it on the masses. I've got someone in the waiting room. I think that's what just messed us up. So give me a second, let it admit. You're, you're back to your blue screen, Carl. Yeah, I just admitted somebody. And I think every time I do that, we have to go through this process. But hopefully I'm getting quicker at it. Meeting controls. Come on, let us in. Stop. There's me. We'll go back to this. I'll give you the screen. And then finally, you know, we'll just close with me if it doesn't act right. We'll just leave it on this. There we go. Okay. Last uh, piece of recruitment I want to talk about simply is just your curriculum. Uh, I don't think we think enough about our curriculum and just how important it is to recruitment. Uh, Whereas a lot of teachers, I think, have to tend generally, again, touch on points that I think are relevant to our students, our curriculum hits everything head on. And the best part of our curriculum, truthfully, I think, is our malleability. And what I mean by that is we've got a predetermined set of competencies that we certainly cover, but the competencies in nature allow for a world of exploration. Now, I tried to hit a link. It didn't work. So again, if you can, visit me in Vegas and we'll be just fine. But we have different sort of activities that a lot of time we can fit within our career association that addresses just the different multiple intelligences that students have. If not even just the career association, we found a way to intersperse them through all our activities. Uh, competency, I want to say it's E29, and my link isn't working, I have it in front of you, just talks about delivering a presentation. If I had to single out one competency, that has done the most to help us recruit and retain, it most certainly would be competency E29 delivered presentation, maybe E30. 
The way we've done this is we definitely do our uh, best practices and information talking about uh, verbal pauses and visual aids and how not to give people things while you're talking because they will address the things more than anything else. But we've left the topic, their final uh, product will be a seven minute speech, but we left that topic open. And I think too often as teachers, we try to scaffold and mold students towards the outcome that we hope to see not realizing that a lot of times that if we can just kind of guide them or push them or nudge them, maybe scaffolding is a good word, towards the outcome we want, they will take a path that will lead them directly to where we hope to get. That competency, more than any others, led them that way and that I've let these students choose their topic. Now they definitely, and I've got somebody wanting to come in, I definitely have screened these topics. It isn't anything that's inappropriate for school. But given the students, the self-advocation piece has been phenomenal in getting students to say. These seven minute speeches have included, truthfully, a student talking about her past of being abused. They have included a student talking about how everyone in school knows these other students to be my siblings. Well, actually they're not. Here's my real family story. These stories have definitely included fun stuff too. Uh, one of my favorites was the evolution of the dad joke and probably the most memorable of these presentations and i'll tell it briefly uh, a student lost her dad before she was born and she had always looked for a platform to just get that out she brought in a polaroid camera not the new style the old style which i have next to me but let me just stay right here um, and she talked about her dad and how the only gift she has from her dad is this Polaroid camera that she isn't quite sure, or not Polaroid, disposable camera, that she isn't quite sure how they work. And so I got up there and explained to her, oh, they're, they're preloaded with film. And we looked and we had three photos left. We took the last three of that day. She's like, then what? I'm like, then you go get it disposed. Or I'm not sorry, disposed, developed. This generation didn't you know what developing film was. And so I took it to Walmart and got it developed. And I got a phone call from her auntie saying, hey, my brother was an interesting guy. Whatever's on those photos, please don't judge us. Certainly I won't, I won't even look at him. And uh, we took the photos, got them developed. I took them to the girl right around Christmas time. She opened them up and there were pictures of her dad at her age. And so that speech that she gave about not having a dad growing up, et cetera, et cetera, and this is the only gift he gave, was followed up with, hey, these are the photos that were in there. It had her dad taking the original selfie, and I think most of us know that, where you get in front of a mirror and you hit the thing, but the flash shows up in the, the exposure anyway. That company in itself has attracted so many other members of the school who have had some things that they've wanted to get off their chest. Word has traveled throughout the school that, hey, hey, the JAG program, they're doing these speeches, and I've had students and teachers say, hey, this student wants to do one of those speeches, we've now called them JAG talks, that the students are doing, can he or she. And we've certainly have been open and amenable to people being able to advocate for themselves and truthfully find some camaraderie. Uh, another activity you could figure out where to put in, we used it loosely <laughs> within the uh, compete, not even with compete, participate, competency. We simply call it the lion game. Maybe you've seen the movie Freedom Riders, that sort of thing. A um, piece of tape during the middle of the class, students sit on opposite sides and simply put, rules are, I give a statement, if it applies, take two steps forward, don't say anything, I give an opportunity to share if you like, and if not, we just say thank you and we move on. Uh, the questions normally start off pretty innocuous, you had breakfast this morning, step forward, whatever. You think Batman's a superhero, the kids crack up on that one every time and want to debate it, whatever, but then they reach other questions that the students want to see that they are not alone. I found time and time again that students seeing they have not, they're not alone has been one of the strongest ties that binds my JAG cohort together and the different things and pursuits in life. Uh, the kids have just thrived in that. One of the slides that's missing, I don't know where it went, but oh well. Uh, we do a monthly, and if you give me a second, I can make this happen. We do a monthly uh, SMART goal. I mean, SMART goals fit everywhere within our curriculum, SMART being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-directed. Um, and so each month we do a SMART goal. 
I don't make the SMART goals fit within a specific genre. And so the slide that I had, maybe at the end as I uh, take question and answer and kind of close it, maybe I can find it. But the slides tend, or I'm sorry, the SMART goals tend to be things like this. A student says that simply, I want to lose five pounds this month. Student says, I want to get an internship. That's Claudia's that I had for the uh, group to see. Student says, I, I want to be more friendly. What's really cool is we still become the teachers. Okay, how do you measure becoming more friendly? And it's so interesting having the students come up with the measures of how they're gonna measure more friendliness. <laughs> I had a student totally measured by the number of likes on a post, which fine if that works for them. And then we continue the conversation, what are some other ways of measuring it? The scales itself, but uh, workout programs, I've worked out with a lot of students after school in our weight room at school. Certainly you get the A and B, you know, the great GPA thing, save money thing. There's a variety of different things that these students can post uh, monthly. And again, it's that tie that binds, that relevancy and that self-choice that I think has helped us retain people. A pretty cool strategy with that, should you wanna maintain that. Go ahead and do an accountability partner. What we do is we'll have student A, write the name on the top and write their monthly goal. And then student B is their accountability. Again, promoting that you're not alone type vibe that I think has been super cool in our cohort. So those are just, two or three quick examples of what you can do with the curriculum that I don't think it takes a lot of adjustment or even for planning to get through. Uh, noticing the time, it looks like it's 1055. So let me move to the last slide, uh, which is a thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it's been an interesting morning. Literally, I have sat on my glasses, so <laughs> I only have one lens. Um, I've had my background fall down, which that was interesting in itself. But I've also had the opportunity to share with a group of people that I am a father, which uh, I haven't been for the previous 41 and a half years in my life. And I'm not just any type of father. I'm a JAG dad. I've adopted a member of our cohort. You've given me an opportunity to share a program that, you know, we say JAG family and we mean JAG family. And I think our, my experience in the Wayne Club or Dale JAG, we're now personifying JAG family. So. I just want to thank you all for an opportunity to, through my background falling, my glasses being broken, uh, Zoom disagreeing with me so often or not, I have an opportunity to share. Um, I encourage you to enjoy the program and by the program, I'm not meaning my presentation, but Jack, for all that it can be. Uh, certainly it makes differences that show up in our children. And even if you don't see them within the two years you have them or the one year and follow up, uh, oftentimes they matriculate and personify themselves in the year to follow. Uh, hopefully my example can be one to show you that. Uh, we do have a couple more minutes left. If anyone would like to uh, ask a question, I would certainly be more than happy to speak about it. Maybe some best practices, things of that nature. I'm trying to get to the chat function, but between me screening shares in the chat, I do see a balloons. So I know something's there. Okay, someone just says, thank you for the presentation. Oh, it's Leslie Chris, thank you. For, well, thank you. And honestly, this is a member of our JAG leadership. Flat out, just thank you for letting me be a part of the program. Uh, it has done, you know, measures from it. Certainly it's done things for the students, but it's done a great deal for me. Uh, I'll take a couple moments. If anyone has any questions, they can unmute or type it in the chat. I've got the chat where I can see it and I can type it back. Um, I do know the uh, schedule for the day has us having to go to another presentation shortly. So by all means, if it's a question that you do have that you don't want to voice right now or type in the chat, and I do see the emails. Uh, at the end of the presentation on that last slide is my email, but I'll throw it in the chat as well. I'll put a couple things. First off, I'm typing my email, which is kturk at venue.edu. That's Vincennes University. Uh, Region 7 employees work through Vincennes. I certainly would invite you all to follow us on Facebook. We are Cloverdale Jag. Totally student run. No, that's not true. 80% student run. I do throw my 20% in there. We are also on Instagram at Cloverdale Jag as well. Uh, I see a couple thank yous out there. I certainly do appreciate you. What's funny is uh, you don't see this off camera. Hey, Chelsea, just come wave. My Jack daughter actually just walked in the door. I don't think she wanted to hear me present, but she's probably very stepping here and wave. So just go ahead and wave. I talked about you. So that's my Jack daughter. They're all waving at you all. Um, 
It's 1058. I appreciate you all. Looks like she's straightening her hair or something. So I appreciate you all for uh, being a part of it. Thank you for all that you do and enjoy the rest of this year's annual conference and look forward to seeing you all next week in person. Thank you, Carl. It was a great presentation. Looking forward to seeing you uh, next week at the State House and again in Vegas. Um, everyone, when you're ready, go ahead and hop over to the DeBruce Foundation's presentation um, through their Zoom link, and that will start at 11 o'clock. Thank you. Whew, that's over.